Hey guys, it's Megan. In today's video, I'll be showing you a few easy DIY jewelry ideas that you can make without beads. I've been having so much fun making DIY jewelry this year, and I always love trying to challenge myself and use materials that you might not normally think of. I tried to give these sort of like a Y2K early 2000s type vibe because I have been loving that style lately. And with some of the materials that I used, I feel like these would work for the coquette aesthetic as well. Now, real quick, before we jump into it, I wanted to give a huge thank you to Hobby Lobby for sponsoring today's video. Hobby Lobby is seriously my favorite craft store ever. They have the best selection out of any craft store near me, and I can pretty much always find what I need. You can find all the supplies that I used in this video at your local Hobby Lobby. So the first project that I made this week were these lace chokers. In the early 2000s, the choker trend was still alive and well. I mean, just look at these pictures of Hilary Duff. Iconic. The main thing that you'll need for this project is some sort of ribbon or trim. I picked out a whole bunch of different trims at my local Hobby Lobby, but if you are someone that you know is into sewing, you might have everything that you need for this at home. Okay, so first you're going to want to measure around your neck. My neck is apparently about 12 and a half inches. Now, you can turn your trim into a choker one of two ways. For the first method, Cut your trim either the same length or a little bit shorter than your neck. I picked out this super pretty lace trim with faux pearl detailing. If your trim has beads on it like mine did, you might need to cut off a few of the ones on the end. Then, get some of these ribbon crimps and add one to either end of the trim. I like to use a little bit of glue inside the ribbon crimp to make sure that it stays in place. I ended up using this gem tack glue that I had left over from another project, and it works surprisingly well. I used a pair of flat pliers to close the ribbon and I repeated this process on the other end. To finish the choker, I used some curved pliers to open a jump ring, then added a lobster clasp to one end. My necklace ended up not being quite long enough, so I added a couple jump rings to the other ribbon crimp. I needed to add three to make it fit, but you might need more or less depending on how accurately you measured. If you don't wanna mess with the jump rings or if you're making this for somebody else, you could also add a small piece of chain to make it more adjustable. But here's how my finished choker turned out. If you don't want to use ribbon crimps, another way that you can make the closure is by using a button and some elastic. For this one, I actually cut my trim about an inch longer than I needed it to be. Then I used a needle and thread to sew a button on one end of the trim. After my button was sewn on, I measured about 3 inches of this 5mm elastic cord, folded it over, and tied a knot at the end. I found it easier to tie the knot before I cut the elastic. I measured the trim around my neck again to see where to fold it, then slipped the elastic inside the fold. Then I used my needle and thread to sew the fold shut. You could use hot glue for this, but I figured that sewing it would make it more secure. Plus, I already had everything out from sewing the button. If you don't have elastic string, I think that a rainbow loom band might work too, as long as your trim isn't super wide. Here's what it should look like when you're done. I wanted to add a charm to this one, so I folded it in half to find the middle and attached my charm with a jump ring. And here's how my finished choker turned out. In terms of comfort, I actually kind of like the one made with the button better, probably because this lace is a little bit softer than the beaded trim. But there are seriously so many things that you can do with this. If you decide to do a lace trim, you could add multiple charms all the way around the choker. Or you could sew on beads, add rhinestones. The options are truly endless. Another super cute necklace idea is the soda tab heart. For this one, you'll need two soda tabs, glue, jump rings, chain, and a lobster clasp. I also use rhinestones, but that's optional. First, add some glue to the bottom of one of your soda tabs. Then stick the second one on top. Wait for that to dry. Then decorate it however you want. I added some rhinestones to sort of define the heart a little bit better, but you could also paint it, or maybe add like seed beads to the edge. I wanted to turn this into a necklace, so I went ahead and cut some chain. The length of your chain will depend on where you want your necklace to sit. I ended up using 9 inches of chain on either side. I used a jump ring on either side of the heart to attach the chain. Then I used another jump ring to attach a lobster clasp to one end of my chain to finish it. And here's how my finished necklace turned out. Let me know in the comments. Did you ever make those soda tab bracelets growing up? I feel like these and also the jewelry that's made with metal bottle caps was really trendy back in the day. I don't drink anything with those kind of bottle caps, but they actually sell them at Hobby Lobby. Like I forgot to take a picture, but I'm telling you, Hobby Lobby, they just have everything. You can also use lace trim like this to make earrings. This was like the easiest thing ever, but I think that they're so cute. I found this flower trim at Hobby Lobby. I picked up this multicolored one and this white one with yellow centers. You'll also need some jump rings and some earring hooks. I thought these post ear wires were really cool. It's basically a stud earring with a loop on the bottom so you can add your own charms. You can also use like the earring hooks if you have those instead. For the colorful flower trim, literally all I did was cut the flowers apart, added two jump rings, and then added my earring post. If you're going to be working with jump rings a lot, I would highly recommend getting one of these jump ring openers. These are super inexpensive and they make things a million times easier. The white flower trim was a little bit thinner, so for this one, I cut off two flowers and glued them back to back with a dab of hot glue in the middle. If your trim's a little bit like floppier and you don't want to do this, you could also cut a piece and cover it with Mod Podge to stiffen it up before you add the earring posts. 
But here's how my finished earrings turned out. Again, I think these are adorable and they're really lightweight too. Oh, and I also ended up making matching chokers using the method that we used earlier. You can also use ribbon or trim to make bracelets. To make these, I used some 5 eighths of an inch ribbon, ribbon crimps, glue, jump rings, magnetic clasps, and various embellishments. Now to make the base of the bracelet, you're pretty much gonna follow the same steps that we did for the chokers. Just measure your ribbon or trim around your wrist, cut it a little bit shorter than you think you'll need it, then add a ribbon crimp to either end, just like we did before. This time I added magnetic clasp to the end. I like using these for bracelets because it makes it a lot easier to put them on. If you're using plain ribbon like I did, you can add different embellishments to sort of jazz it up a little bit. And one way that you can do that is by making designs with rhinestones. If you watched my last art projects to do in your board video, you might remember this rhinestone butterfly canvas that I made. I had a whole bunch of rhinestones left over, so I thought I'd use them to decorate my bracelets. I made a tool to pick up the rhinestones by wrapping a little bit of blue tack around the end of a pencil. This actually worked surprisingly well. I just used a toothpick to sketch out my design with glue, then added the rhinestones. I kind of remember rhinestones in general just being really big in the early 2000s. I remember like my favorite pair of jeans when I was, I don't know, in like second grade. They had these pink rhinestone butterflies on them. I ended up making this pink bracelet with these hearts on it. And I also made a blue bracelet with a butterfly design. Hopefully you can tell that's a butterfly, right? Putting rhinestones on stuff is actually like so much fun. Like you wouldn't think that it would be, but... Now I kinda wanna add rhinestones to everything that I own. If you want, you can also add multiple layers to your bracelet. For this one, I glued on some lace before adding the ribbon crimps and glued a few of these flat-backed pearls on top. Again, I feel like this is sort of giving coquette, um, I don't really know how I feel about that whole aesthetic. Like on one hand, not gonna lie, some of these coquette girlies are low-key toxic, but at the same time, like, concerningly relatable. I don't really like pink that much though, so I kinda do it. If you don't have ribbon crimps, you can use the same button technique that we used before. I thought it might be cool to get some of these fancier buttons to make it the focal point of the bracelet. This time I used this white lace trim. I cut a piece that was a little bit longer than my wrist. Since this is gonna be the main focal point, I hemmed the end of the lace before I sewed on the button to give it a more finished look. Then I sewed on this sparkly heart-shaped button. This time I sewed the button a little bit farther away from the edge so that there won't be that gap when you close the bracelet. I made the elastic closure just like we did before, wrapping the lace around my wrist, folding it to mark how long it needed to be, then sewing in a loop of elastic. I trimmed off the excess, and here's how my finished bracelets turned out. I think the ones with the lace are my favorite, but the rhinestones are super fun too. So those were all the projects that I made this week. If you're looking for more jewelry ideas, make sure to check out the playlist link below. I bought a whole bunch of this lace trim for this video, and a few of the products that I wanted to do ended up being a total fail, so I have a ton of it left, and if you have any suggestions for how I should use it, make sure to let me know. So thank you guys so, so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos just like this one. Again, thank you so much to Hobby Lobby for sponsoring today's video. You can find all the supplies that I used at your local Hobby Lobby. I'll put a link to them in the description. My merch, my website, and all of my social media will be linked down below. I love you guys so, so much, and I'll see you guys later. Bye!